we're going to owe Castleford one because they really gave us a spanking last year at their gaff. So uh, hopefully yeah. I'll be able to enjoy this one a little bit more. 30 points to 20 in favour of Wigan. We've got uh, the Challenge Cup um, this week. So we picked a game of the week from the Challenge Cup with no Championship and League One action. It's both those divisions get into Challenge Cup action. Um, the game I picked out as game of the week is York versus Swinton. And I've picked this out because I think there's a potential upset on the cards. And I think we both feel the same way about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've tipped York to win, to beat Swinton. I mean, York are an up-and-coming side in the Championship. They're going quite uh, well. They had a narrow, tough away win this weekend. Swinton haven't got a win yet this season. Some of their dual reg players might not be... uh, Some of the dual reg options that they've had recently might not be there for them in this game, potentially. I'm not sure. York um, are Rovers dual reg, and I don't know whether they'll... um want their players not to be cup tied because obviously having a smaller squad and going into the cup a round earlier than a lot of these Super League clubs so they might be limited as well well Rovers have a huge squad though don't they they've, they've just got not got many star players in, in well yeah in that okay, but, they, that squad. but with going in earlier I just wonder whether they'll be trying to preserve some of those players well, let's have a look who played for them last weekend uh, Kieran Moss he's a um... He's a Rovers player, isn't he? Matty Marsh, he is, and James Donaldson, he is. Um, so that yeah, they might miss out, but they've still got some impressive players in there. They've got Colton Roche on loan from Huddersfield. They've got Ben Kane, uh, obviously. Um, Ash Ash Robson's a talented kid. Connor Robinson, he came through at one of the halls, if not both of them, at some point. And Graham Horn, of course, he's he's getting a go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, well, I think York, though. I think you know, home advantage. They're getting good crowds down there. It's a they game are. they can sell, um, and it's a game they can sell to the city. Uh, you think Normanton versus Rochdale? That's the BBC game. That's online from two p.m. on Saturday, and on your connected TVs and through the apps and all that, all that business. Um, and I'm sure it'll be on the iPlayer afterwards. In the NRL. Uh, the Brit picks are Thursday, five past nine is Sky Game, and this is uh, it's the Sharks versus the Dragons, so we'll get to see Jammer and Widdop in that one. Friday, 7 a.m. Sky Game doesn't have any British uh, interest, but it's the Roosters versus the Bulldogs. Friday at five past nine on Sky, it's the uh, the Derby in Bris in Brisbane between the Broncos and the Cowboys. You know, there's a, a long shot chance that. Um, Andre Savellio play for the Broncos. Saturday, if you're up early and you've got the Watch NRL app, you can watch the Warriors versus the Titans and see if Joe Greenwood gets a gig. Then we move on to Saturday, half six. So you don't have to get up quite as early for this one. If you want to see all the Burgesses, go into action for the Rabbitohs against the Panthers. And then Sunday at 7.30 a.m., it'll be Elliot Whitehead's Canberra Raiders against the Newcastle Knights. So that's your NRL fixtures to keep an eye out for this weekend. Um, I think that's really everything covered, isn't it, Sarah? So all that's left to do okay. is wrap up the show. And I've got a quiz for you, so get excited. So, Sarah, that's your first uh, Super League pod as co-host. Have you enjoyed it? I have enjoyed it, yes, thank you. Yeah, well, it's been great having you on and, and getting, um, you know, a proper passionate fans' insight on what was a... You, I think you were well... You, you held yourself well on that whole game, really, because, um, you know, you could have gone full ref's fault like uh, like most of the Thursday night Twitter experience was. So I think I think you you did well there. It was Thursday night. If it had been yesterday's match, it might not have been so controlled. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. And and I really hope that we've, we've got you on in, I think, five or six weeks' time is when you're, yeah. you're next slated to be on the show. So hopefully that'll follow um, a win for you so you can yeah, be in. Yeah, we'll play Catalans the weekend before, so hopefully. Well, don't, well, don't get too cocky, though. I'm not being cocky. I said hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've got a quiz for you anyway, so you can get right. you know back to winning ways in a Hull FC manner here by by winning the quiz. A very Hull FC themed quiz for you, and I'm going to be asking you about Hull FC's top try scorers in the Super League era. Oh, okay. 
Um, now, uh, li listen carefully because there's a bit of a nuance to it, but it's not too complicated. Okay. According to the Rugby League Project website, three players have topped Hull's try scoring charts more than once during the Super League era. All you need to do is name those three players and tell me how many times you think each of them has been the top try scorer for, for Hull in a season. And if you can name the years that that was the case, then that would be even more impressive. But I'm really looking for the names and the amount of times. Just to give you a clue, um, one of the years it was shared between two of these players. Okay. Um. I don't want to hear any mouse clicks going into a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was writing it down, so I didn't... <laughs> uh, Jamie Shaw? Jamie Shaw is one of the three. Um, I'm, try... I'm sure he shared it one year, and I'm trying to think who with. Uh... Richard Horn? No, he is not. But in that sort of Richard Horn ballpark might be a clue for one of them. But he played for 10 years. That's not much of a ballpark. <laughs> I don't mean all of them played with him. But I mean someone who you would associate alongside Richard Horn in the sort of the, the Hull FC pantheon. <laughs> um. Uh, let's think. Oh, more than once. I'm trying to think of people that have ever played for Hull FC. <laughs> it's only in Super League, so it's, you know, relatively yes. recent memory. And actually, the earliest season that one of these players was the top scorer in was 2006, if that helps. Right, okay. Um, let's think. Um, Mahe Fenua. No, no, he didn't play for us for long enough. No, it won't be Fenua. Um, because it's got to be more than one season. Um, Kalanoa. No, you're thinking too recent. I'm thinking too recent. Yeah, okay. I'll give you two more guesses before I take you out of your misery. <laughs> Kirk Yeeman. Kirk Yeeman is one of the two names that I was looking for left. And uh, can you think of who the other one? Now, Kirk Yeeman is one of the one is the one who shared it with this other person. Right. So Jamie Shaw. Is, I think this was just Super League tries, maybe. So maybe Jamie Shaw tied the the overall with with um, someone one year, but this person tied it with Kirk Yeeman in two thousand and eleven. Um. 2011 um and actually it's a big it's another clue this player won was top try scorer three years in a row for Hull FC Do you want to kick yourself? Yeah, I'm really <laughs> struggling. He scored two times on Thursday night as he put Hull, uh, Hull FC to the sword. Tom Briscoe, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take a guess at how many times Kurt Yeeman's been the top try scorer during uh, during the Super League years for for Hull? Um, three. It's actually four times. Do you know, I really went for four and then I thought, no, I'm giving him too much credit. Six, eight, nine, and eleven, in which he shared it with Tom Briscoe. How many times Tom Briscoe in total do you think was a top try scorer? Two. No, it was it was actually three. Uh, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then Jamie Shaw kind of took over from those two in a, in a way. How many times do you think Jamie Shaw Shaw's been top try scorer? Three. Yep. Uh, fourteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So obviously top try scorer two years in a row. It's it's no wonder that Hull fans think he should be. Uh, in the England squad, but hey ho. Yep. He needs to catch the ball in Sky Games. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorry to keep bringing that up. Okay, right. It's uh, it's every 
co-host's favourite part of the show now. Um, it's the SLP Recommends. So what have you got to, to recommend to us, Sarah? Well, I thought this was going to be really easy. And actually, I've had sleepless nights trying to think about what I wanted to recommend. <laughs> Just recommend them all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't think of anything at all. <laughs> It was too much pressure. So in the end, I decided I'm going to recommend, um, it's a game, it's called The Resistance. And um, basically, you play with a group of people and you're all a team who are going out to win the battles. But within your team, some of the people are spies and traitors and don't want the team to win. Um, But nobody knows who they are. And the aim is to uncover them before they can um, defeat... uh, um, they can stop the mission being successful and yeah we, we've had lots of fun playing it um so, and basically just shouting and insulting each other and just accusing each other yeah basically. so it's a is it a board game is it a it's more like um like you're given cards out yeah. it's that sort of a game but oh, yeah wow. that does sound like a lot of fun i've got a few i've got a few friends who are into like card role playing type games so i'll jot that one down yeah they... no we've We've enjoyed playing that. Um, and my other recommend seems a bit counterintuitive, but it's just to get involved with SLP. Like if you're listening and, you know, you've never sent in a review or you've only sent in a one or two, you know, get involved, especially if you're female, despite all that I've said tonight. You know, <laughs> minority here. Um, but, you know, the SLP family is great and I would highly recommend people get stuck in with it. Well, yeah, no, I... I, I'd always agree with that. I think you guys, you listeners, and you know, we've got a, a core of listeners that have got involved, particularly in the show around my call to arms when uh, when when Tom did his uh, midnight midnight flea. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Tom's Tom's still in that core group as well. Is is a regular listener, and um, and I still love him very much. But <laughs> but um, yeah. There was a, 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 a tight group that really got behind me and, and helped me and, and wanted to be part of the show, and, and you're, you're a huge part of that. And that actually is why one of my SLP recommends is Scoots Creates. <laughs> Thanks. Because, um, honestly, like, a lot... When I've been... Sh- you, basically, this is Sarah's um, crocheting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the various sea creatures and um, cartoon characters and, and all of the wonderful things that you managed to create out of wool that that quite amazed me now um i've had i've had friends of mine asking what what is this thing that you're sharing these are amazing um so so hopefully at some point some of my friends might buy some of your uh, designs off your brand. you've got a facebook page haven't you basically I have, so if, yeah if, every, if everyone wants to go uh, on facebook and, and search for scoops creates i'll try and share some posts onto the slp uh facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash super league pod as well so that people can go there and like both of our pages at the same time if they don't already um so that's my first recommends because uh, it is wonderful what you what you're able to do i think it's i think it's remarkable thank you yeah no i taught myself about 18 months ago because i was cross that i didn't know how to <laughs> well i mean my grandma's been been knitting for, for years and years and years and um, basically knits the same two or three designs for years and years and years <laughs> so to see what you're coming up with is, is absolutely wonderful um, and the other thing is something I probably recommended last year but it's a BBC3 docu mock you soap called This Country um, sort of they follow these young adults in a Cotswolds community and it's just one of the funniest things that you'll see on television so go on your iPlayer and, and, and get hold of This Country it's, it's really good um is what i would say okay and i was struggling for something to recommend this week other than scooch creates until um i noticed that there was new episodes to download of that on the iplayer today so so we watched it before we got on to skype with you um coming up next week i've got tim g back for a couple of uh shows so like i said he can he can get some points scored back for the rovers fans uh <laughs> there so making sure we keep everyone involved um and hopefully he'll have another coventry cup win to to talk about and that'll be that'll be exciting too so um we'll look forward to that uh, i want people's feedback on funny injury stories that would be great and 
feedback on anything we said about the England squad because I think we probably didn't really get too controversial on it and uh, maybe some other people have got some stronger views that they want us to air because we will air them unfiltered on Super League Pod as always um, no one to thank for donations this week but that doesn't mean that I'm not grateful for all the donations I've had already uh, but people if 